January 6, 2000, nine years after the murder of the Visconda family, hundreds of people crammed their way to the Paranaque Regional Trial Court to await the verdict of the six sons of rich and influential families charged with homicide with rape. All eyes are on the lone judge, Amelita Tolentino. Television and radio stations cover the event live. At 8.30 a.m., the clerk of court starts reading the 186-page decision. This court hereby finds all the principal accused of guilt beyond the general doubt of the crime of rape with homicide and hereby sentences each of them to suffer the penalty of reclusion perpetual. Judge Tolentino sentences life imprisonment to Hubert Webb, Peter Estrada, Aspicio Fernandez, Michael Gachalian, Antonio Lajano II, and Miguel Rodriguez. The court sentences police investigator Gerardo Bial to 11 years in prison as an accessory to cover up the crime by destroying vital crime scene evidence. Wala po akong pinasisiyan eh. Kasi malamang din naman kung halimbawa ako ay uh, nabaon ng mga tao na hindi naman totoo, baka ang karma noong mas maaga, baka napatahin na ako. As he listens to the verdict, Webb drops the usual brave front and sobs. In the public gallery, the parents and siblings of all the accused are overwhelmed with emotion. And we knew we were going to get to the end because we, we saw how it was going. It was really one-sided. If you can look at the transcripts, we never won an objection. We probably win one out of ten. They would win ten, we'd win one. Widower Lauro Visconda is overjoyed. But aware that the accused will contest the decision all the way to the Supreme Court, he expresses relief for the partially gained justice for his murdered wife and two daughters. In making her decision, Judge Tolentino sides with the testimony of the eyewitness. She is not convinced with Webb's alibi because she finds the sworn statements and testimonies of defense witnesses full of inconsistencies. The judge says the photographs and videotapes of Webb frolicking in the snow in the United States appear to be tampered. The court ignores the documents from the FBI and the U.S. State Department because the American signatories of evidence submitted by Webb did not testify in court about the authenticity and accuracy of its contents. The judge also dismisses the letters of the FBI legal attaché to the NBI that substantiate Webb's claim that he was in the United States between March 1991 to October 1992. She says Hefner, who is based at the U.S. Embassy in Manila, does not have first-hand information about Webb's whereabouts at the time of the murders. Hefner and the then U.S. Secretary of State Madeleine Albright also did not testify in court. We at the U.S. Embassy thought it was very unusual, though, that documentation which was provided to the Philippine government as authenticated uh, would not be accepted uh, as a documentation. Uh, but then again, this we have to go by the Philippine law and what the rules and regulations are here, where uh, a secretary of state of a foreign country would have to personally appear. In summing up her decision, Judge Tolentino highlights that the power and the money at the disposal of the webs meant they could have come up with all the evidence and witnesses necessary to defend the accused Hubert. Quoting from a Supreme Court ruling, she says, truth is established not by the number of witnesses, but by the quality of their testimonies. Actually, the norm is to look for witnesses. And uh, the so-called eyewitness is the best. And that is because, that's it. We don't know much about the value of physical evidence. That's why there's nothing left. We take the easy way out. Was there anybody who saw the incident? And then you look for a face to match the sketch. 
And once you have that, and you have a witness pointing a finger and saying, oh yes, that's him, I saw him. Even if he's wrong, this witness is wrong. Uh, people lie, by the way. People make mistakes. People could be paid to say anything. The Webbs appealed the lower court decision, but in 2005, the Court of Appeals upholds the ruling of Judge Tolentino, 3-2. to two. The Visconda Massacre case now goes to the Supreme Court for automatic review. Despite losing their appeals, the Webbs swear by Hubert's innocence. They elevate to the Supreme Court Hubert's appeal for a DNA analysis even volunteering to pay for it. Consulted by the webs on DNA testing, Dr. Raquel Fortune, a renowned forensic pathologist, believes DNA analysis could prove the guilt or innocence of Hubert Webb in the Visconda massacre case. But they're willing to pay because they're, they're serious, they're sure, it cannot have been him, and therefore his DNA is not there. Thirteen years after Webb's appeal, the Supreme Court grants his request for DNA testing, but the High Court order cannot be undertaken. The vaginal smear taken from Carmela Visconda containing the DNA is missing. Both the NBI and the lower court claim that the specimen is not in their custody. The Supreme Court halts any further DNA investigations. Enraged, the Webbs filed an urgent motion to acquit Hubert because of the failure of the government to preserve vital evidence that could prove the innocence of the accused. They say Hubert was denied due process, which is grounds for an acquittal. The DNA examination would have conclusively shown that the person who had access to Carmela would have left spermatozoa in the corpse of Carmela. And that which was taken from the corpse of Carmela Visconde would have shown who was the one who had access, and it would have shown that it was not Hubert Webb. For 15 years, Hubert's family has never failed to visit him every Sunday at the National Penitentiary where the webs always celebrate important occasions. Despite the many legal setbacks, the webs have not lost hope that Hubert would be acquitted in the end. The court will have to say that he's innocent. Well, whichever route we take, the important thing is for him to get a clean slate. Every day, I'm sure, he's asking himself, what am I doing here? 15 years of loss of his life, that's not, that's not easy. Even Hubert believes that his freedom is only a matter of time. It will happen. Somehow it will happen. I, I think the most important thing we have to always have is hope. Even when our chips are down, as long as we have hope, there's still something to fight for. To him, the most worrisome aspect of the case is that the real killers are still on the loose. What me is those crazy-minded individuals are out there, and we're paying the price for their sins. It's going to be the... It's there somewhere. Because it isn't us. Is it me? December 2010, two months after backtracking from the order for DNA testing, the Supreme Court catches the whole country by surprise. Seven magistrates vote to acquit Webb and his alleged conspirators, while four justices uphold the guilty verdict of the lower courts and four others abstain in the decision-making. Hubert Webb and his fellow accused are set free. In a vote of 7-4, with four justices taking no part, has acquitted Hubert Jeffrey P. Webb. The High Court ruling says Alfaro is not an eyewitness, but an NBI informer. 
Hearing the good news, relatives rush to the National Penitentiary to welcome all the accused. From his residence, Visconda receives the shocking news. He is devastated. While lawyers of Laura Visconda ask the court to reconsider its decision, families of the accused prepare to file cases against personalities responsible for robbing 15 years from the life of their six young loved ones. Among those likely to face charges are Judge Tolentino, Jessica Alfaro, agents of the National Bureau of Investigation, and prosecutors who built and handled the case. Pwedeng ganun? Kailangan namang malagot? Sino ba ang mananagot dito? 15 years magdusang anak ko. It has to happen. The facts, the truth has to be out there in the next several weeks. The Justice Department joins the fray and announces a reinvestigation of the Visconda massacre case. Twenty years after the gruesome murders, the Visconda massacre saga continues with Jennifer, Carmela, and Estrelita Visconda still crying out for justice from their graves.